It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. <laughs> yeah, you can't get any more clear than this. It is the game of the week in college football nationwide. In fact, so big that ESPN's college game day will be in Stillwater for the Saturday contest. 3 o'clock kickoff, by the way, on FS1 between the Sooners and the Cowboys. The Sooners debuted at number 5 this week in the first installment of the college football playoff poll. The Cowboys are at number 11, but OSU actually is favored to win this game. The line was at three. It's gone down to two and a half as we're broadcasting this show on the Thursday before Bedlam. If you're looking at the history of this game, well, it's been one-sided. And the Sooners, 85 wins, only 19 defeats, seven ties. But this century, even though the Sooners have won most of the games, these games have been by and large competitive, and they have been entertaining. And again, OSU will have home field advantage playing at the Boone. So the Sooners, who've played very well at Boone Pickett Stadium this century, well, they're going to need another stellar performance in order to get a step closer to the Big 12 title game and to remain viable in the college football playoff rankings. Remember, you got to make the top four when the regular season is done, when the conference championship games are over, in order to qualify for that four-team playoff. And before I break down the college football playoff a little bit more, because I do have a strong opinion about it and what people are, are, are saying that got me a little bit upset. Something that's not making me upset, though, is the recruiting for the Sooners. And by the way, this past weekend, they landed a big commitment, Ronnie Perkins, the terrific defense advanced four-star DE out of the St. Louis area. Well, he's as verbally committed to the Sooners. So that's a, a big get. And, you know, you can get defensive ends for, for a team like the Sooners who definitely could use all the help they can get as far as getting to the quarterback. I mean, it can't be, you know, just all oboe. You can't play with him forever. It helps that you can get uh, future stars to come to Norman, and Ronnie Perkins appears to be one of those guys. So a big uh, get for the uh, Sooners as they get a verbal commitment from Ronnie Perkins. Talking about the initial college football playoff ranking, which came out Tuesday night, you noticed that Georgia, not Alabama, was number one in the country. And again, it's based upon current body of work. Bama number two, Notre Dame at number three, and at number four, Clemson. But right there at number five is Oklahoma. and I'll tell you what, a few weeks ago, after that Sooner loss to Iowa State, I thought it was virtually impossible for the Sooners to get back into the race because I thought that that loss to the Cyclones would, you know, keep them down. But Iowa State, right now 15th in the country, yeah, that helps Oklahoma. And beating Ohio State earlier in the year, it looks even bigger now that the Buckeyes are in command in the Big Ten Eastern Division. And their only loss, again, was to Oklahoma. But there are some out there who want to say that that win that Oklahoma had over Ohio State back in September, well, like we're just supposed to forget about it, right? Because Ohio State looks better now, and they've played better ball. And what I'm going to say has nothing against the Buckeyes, okay? It's a fine program, terrific coaching, terrific athletes, and, you know, wonderful fan base and their tradition. You know, it reminds me a lot of the Sooners as far as achievements, okay? So this is nothing against Ohio State. This is against those national idiots like Jesse Palmer from ESPN who said one of the most asinine things I've ever heard in my life when he said that if Ohio State and Oklahoma played now, Ohio State would win by 20 points. Is this guy on narcotics or what? This is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard in my life. Do we not remember what happened the second week of September when Oklahoma went to Columbus and won by 16 points? In Columbus, by 16, and there are people out there who say, well, Kevin Wilson, it was just his second game as offensive coordinator. Look at what they've done now. Well, it was Lincoln Riley's second game as head coach. I mean, people want to make excuses sometimes, wanting to keep Oklahoma away from the college football playoff, or they're wanting to put Ohio State at a much higher level than the Sooners when the Sooners beat them over a month ago. Is the win everything? No. But should it count? Absolutely. And at least... For right now, the college football playoff committee recognizes that Oklahoma should be ahead of Ohio State. Now, look, if Oklahoma loses at some point during this regular season or in the Big 12 title game, if they get that far and Ohio State runs the table, then, of course, Ohio State deserves to be ahead of Oklahoma because they'll have a better record. But if they both run the table, both win their conferences, and if Ohio State's ahead of Oklahoma or if Ohio State gets into the playoff and the Sooners don't, then I am going to propose to the Sooners Call UCLA next year. That UCLA is supposed to play in Norman next year. Call UCLA and say, here is a buyout. Here's a check for a million dollars. 
we're not going to play you. Because apparently playing non-conference games, if you win them, mean nothing. And we're supposed to believe by some of these national idiots that beating Ohio State doesn't count for anything. Or we're going to say, well, Ohio State, you know, they're playing better now. It's all about now. And playing now does matter. But what you did in September should not be dismissed. That's the risk you play in playing a high-profile non-conference opponent. If you lose, yeah, it's going to show. But if you win, there is a big benefit to it. And this is the benefit. You stay in contention, which the Sooners have done. And like I said, you know, ESPN, it's the same network, by the way, that has Joey Galloway employed. Galloway picked Baylor to win the Big 12. Now how many victories Baylor has right now? This many. A goose egg. Zero. Nothing. Nada. They didn't even beat Texas San Antonio. And yet Joey Galloway picked them to win the Big 12. Joey Galloway obviously knows nothing about college football and definitely knows zip about the Big 12. Okay, so let's break this matchup down, shall we? Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Bedlam for Saturday in terms of the positions. Who's better? Quarterback, even though I know Mason Rudolph has thrown for about 200 more yards this year than that of Baker Mayfield, I still give the advantage to number six. That's right. Baker is 2-0 lifetime as a starter in Bedlam. Number two, Mayfield has won more clutch games than that of his worthy quarterback opponent. And Mayfield still has not lost a game on the road as a starter. He has not lost a true road game yet. So advantage to Oklahoma at QB. Running backs, though, even though I know the Sooners have plenty of depth with Abdul Adams, with Trey Sermon, with Marcellus Sutton, with Demetri Flowers, and with Rodney Anderson, whose game continues to emerge, I still give the edge to Oklahoma State as far as running backs because that of Justice Hill, who needs 164 more rushing yards to get to 1,000 for the year. And last week, Oklahoma State proved that they can handle adversity. When Hill got hurt early, even though he would come back very late, it was J.D. King who picked up the slack, the true freshman. Last week, touched the ball 36 times and rushed for over 140 yards. So Oklahoma State does have a little depth um, as far as running game goes, even though Oklahoma has more depth. Right now, as far as quality, I give the edge to the Cowboys. Wide receiver, well, the Cowboys have the best receiving core in all of college football, in my opinion. James Washington, he's already over 1,000 yards receiving for the season, over 22 yards per catch. So he's dangerous. And you have Marcel Aitman. 19.6 yards per catch, and don't forget about J.D. McCleskey as well as Dylan Stoner. The edge goes to Oklahoma State, even though the Sooners have done well as far as wide receiver. We thought this would be um, the one area that would give the Sooners the most problems entering this season just because they didn't have much experience or depth. But uh, so far, C.D. Lamb has been terrific. He can play for any team in the country with 18 yards per catch. And don't forget about Jeff Padette, over 18 yards of catch as well. And Mark Andrews, got to hold on to the ball, but I think he'll get some open looks on Saturday. But again, Edge goes to Oklahoma State as far as receiver. As far as offensive line, um, it will help the Cowboys to have Brad Lumbly, their uh, center, back full-time. But OU's offensive line, led by maybe the best left tackle in the country, Orlando Brown, you give Oklahoma the edge just because of overall depth, talent, and experience. Now let's break down the defense, okay? Defensive line, kind of a tricky area because if you want to say that Oboe is a defensive end because, you know, he's listed as a linebacker, but they line him up a lot on the line. So if you're saying that Oboe is a defensive lineman, I would say Edge goes to Oklahoma because of his pass rushing presence. So I would say Oklahoma has the edge as far as defensive line, but as far as linebacker, I give the edge to Oklahoma State. More because Oklahoma this year, at times, linebackers have not shown up like they did not early against Kansas State or against Texas Tech. Even though they got better as the game went along, there have been times where you know we haven't you know really seen Caleb Kelly or seen Emmanuel Beal or we haven't seen um, Murray, Kenneth Murray. There's been times where the linebacking core for the, for the Sooners has not been reliable. So a little edge in this department to Oklahoma State. As far as the secondary, this is a wash, okay? At times, both teams have done well. And at times, both teams have given up their fair share of big plays and scores. Now, both teams last week, I think, can be happy from two different perspectives. From Oklahoma State's perspective, as far as the secondary, yeah, they did give up some big plays. They did give up some yardage. But they also forced four Will Greer interceptions, too. And that's because Glenn Spencer will mix it up. He'll show some blitzes. 
inside or outside. And that's one thing the Sooners will have to be very aware of. And again, they forced four Will Greer interceptions. I think Greer is a, is a fine quarterback for West Virginia, but he didn't have a good game in the secondary for the Cowboys took advantage. Now, as far as Oklahoma, they didn't really um, emerge as far as interceptions, but as far as just adjusting. We mentioned the three-man front going to the four-man front. Well, that really helped the secondary over the next three quarters. After the rough start in the first quarter, in which they gave up three touchdown passes, the Sooners only gave up one TD over the next three quarters. And when you can hold Texas Tech to just one touchdown in 45 minutes, you've done a heck of a job. Finally, special teams. I give the edge to Oklahoma. Austin Cybers only missed one kick this year inside of 40 yards. Matt Amendola, the OSU kicker, much different story. He's been a train wreck from short range. He's missed four kicks this year um, from close range. Now, talking about what Oklahoma will need to do to win this game from the defensive side when they go against Oklahoma State's offense, Mike Gundy wants to keep this game as balanced as possible. Take the running element out of it first. Again, I will scream bloody murder if OU is running a three-man front on first and second down or on third and short. you got to be able to contain Justice Hill and J.D. King. You can do that. You can win this game. TCU was able to contain OSU's running game, and the Cowboys only lost this year. And that was in Stillwater, by the way. TCU had held Oklahoma State to only 101 rushing yards. Opposite side of the ball, pretty much same blueprint. OU must make the running game first and foremost, and there's enough depth to where they can be able to do that. Um, Oklahoma State has held opponents to only 125 yards rushing this year. TCU was able to rush for 237 yards in that victory over the Cowboys a few weeks ago. So there you have it. You must be able to run successful. If you do that, then Baker Mayfield doesn't have to do it all by himself. And by running successfully, you should have guys like Lamb and Andrews open, and the Sooners should be able to run smoothly as possible on the offensive side. There's going to be a lot of points on both sides of the ball, but if the Sooners can be successful in that ground attack, first and foremost, then they should be just fine. Final thoughts on this game. Look, at the beginning of the year, I had OU losing two games, okay? Ohio State and Oklahoma State. Of course, I did not realize how good the Sooners were going to be game number two in Columbus and pulling off that 16-point win. I know the Sooners haven't quite played on that level, but they do have the capability and they do have the talent. And if they've had the week of preparation when we think they've had, then they can go into Stillwater and pull off the W. Okay, If you can win in Columbus, Ohio, you can win anywhere in the country. It'll be tough. It'll be a close game because Oklahoma State's a talented team. But the Sooners have won games like this before away from home. And if you can change your phone number with the operator, you can change your pick from preseason to now. And I'm going to say Oklahoma, they're going to win. They're going to go into Stillwater, and they're going to win. I'm going to go 41-35, OU to win a thrilling Bedlam game and to remain in the Big 12 title hunt and big picture remain up there in terms of the college football playoff rankings. I got 41-35 Sooners. Don't forget my pick show. My three picks, I'll have it coming up later in the week on this very webpage, so check it out. And Saturday night, I will have my post-game of Bedlam, the Sooners and the Cowboys. Boomer Sooner!